and welcome to the Parish of White Creeges. Thank you for joining us this morning from wherever you are, whether it's in White Creeges or much further afield. You are very welcome and we are pleased that you have joined us. During these times, whilst things are so uncertain, I know the ability for us to all to be together for our Sunday services is a great comfort and support to many of us. I hope you've had a chance to download the order of service from our newsletter or from our Facebook group so that you can join in at home if you want. With a virtual service we obviously can't take a collection and it's the weekly collections that fund the work of the church and pay the bills. However you can contribute your collection by going to our website at www.parishofwhitecreeges.org.uk and select the Donate to Parish Funds button or by calling me, Gary Hepburn, and making a card payment over the phone on 01305 778169 after the service is finished. This donation can be for either All Saints or St Edmund's churches. Thank you so much for your continued support. It is greatly appreciated. Our first hymn this morning is, And He Shall Reign after which we will go live to the Reverend Betty Port, who is leading this morning's service, assisted by the rest of our ministry team. What a vision filled my eyes One like a sun of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to our service today, 
as we celebrate Ascension Day and our hymn in particular, that verse, what a vision filled my eyes, one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the awesome throne. So on this beautiful day of sunshine, we bring you all together in your church, your homes, as you are in mine, in order to celebrate this wonderful day. So let us now hear our prayers of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Lord Jesus, you suffered a cruel death on the cross for our redemption. Yet we have forgotten your pain and stayed in the realm of the evil you defeated. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were raised from death to bring us new life. Yet we have preferred the comfort of the familiar and the empty promises of a sinful world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father, your God and our God. Plead there at the right hand of God for our forgiveness and entry into the fullness of his presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. in Christ in glory. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The first reading 
taken from a letter of St. Paul, St. Peter, sorry. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you to know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Forgive my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, Freely, freely. You have received freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. All power is given in Jesus' name, in love and love. In Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, I come to you to 
God's name, I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, really, really, you have received, really, really give. Go with my name, and because you believe, Others will know that I live. Alleluia! Alleluia! Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Alleluia! Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. To you O, Christ. o Christ. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word, and as we think on these things, open our hearts to hear you. Amen. Amen. The other day I was opening my diary, which is here, and I was idly turning the pages back over the last few months. I noticed various events with a large X slashed through them, denoting that because of COVID-19 they have been cancelled. There's an example there, I don't know how well you can see that that you can see that everything has been X'd out. These events included things like Easter visits to my parents and younger brother, an evening with my friend, Jeff Thomas, in the company of the legendary West Ham football legend, Jeff Hurst, speaking at Weymouth Pavilion. And most disappointingly of all, perhaps, the Locks and Glens coach holiday in Scotland, Jill and I were much looking forward to in early May not to mention all those parish events we all enjoy together as a community in Lent, Holy Week and Easter, but had to forego or reconfigure in a virtual way. No doubt your diaries are also replete with X marks or deleted dates since late March. Events, dear boy, events. These words were famously said by the incoming Prime Minister, Harold Macmillan, who was propelled into 10 Downing Street as a result of the Suez Canal debacle in 1956, the year me and Jill were born, in fact. 
This was his response when a journalist asked him, what would determine your government's course? Events, dear boy, events. Certainly, the unforeseen pandemic events have caused all of our lives to change dramatically from late March in order to be safer from the coronavirus and also to attempt to lower the rate of infection of the disease in the early weeks after lockdown. It has certainly confirmed for me that human beings are social and relational. We do not function well psychologically and emotionally when isolated from one another for a long period of time. Events, dear boy, events. Events were about to envelope those disciples at the Last Supper, like an oncoming tsunami wave. Much of John's account concerns what is known as Jesus' farewell discourses. But this is not the conventional prayer of a dying man. Rather, Jesus' farewell is about the full constellation of the events of Jesus' so-called hour, the hour of death, resurrection and ascension. It is a prayer of the one on the verge of willingly laying down his life and thus completing God's work. He is teaching and preparing his disciples for his departure, the journey to the cross, his resurrection, and finally the ascension to his Father in heaven. Just before this gospel passage that we heard today, narrated by Janet, he warns his disciples that his hour has come. He tells them they will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave him alone. Did the disciples take this on board, though, one wonders? One theologian opined that even worse, the disciples in their false confidence think that they do believe. But we know from the Gospels that these disciples will in fact scatter at the vital hour, each to his own home in confused fear. One might say that the cataclysmic events involved in Jesus' hour were just too overwhelming for them to respond to in the right way. Perhaps this is why Jesus now turns from his disciples and looks heavenward to pray intimately to his Father God in their hearing. I wonder, have you ever eavesdropped on a phone call where your character is actually being discussed? Well, if the testimony about you is affirming, you may be forgiven for walking off with a spring in your step. In Jesus' tender, encouraging prayer to his Father, the disciples are blessed to hear that, in spite of any imminent failings, when Jesus' hour has come, he prays that they remain as one, in the same way that he has experienced with God the Father. The band of disciples were never, judging from the gospel evidence, previously strongly unified. They were sometimes jostling for power and status, between Peter, James, Andrew and John, for example. And one imagines that Judas would have been a rather disruptive loose cannon in the group as well. Even so, Jesus does not dwell on any of their flaws, past or yet to come, in his friends. Rather, he prays for them as the people the Father gave him as a gift from the world. Wow, what a confidence-boosting endorsement for those listening disciples to eavesdrop on. I bet they walked off with a spring in their step. Jesus shows care and concern that the world will hate them and persecute them in the years to come. Jesus trusts his friends and is entrusting them after his departure to continue the mission. He knows that his father will care for them just as much as he, as their teacher, has loved and cared for them in his earthly ministry. Theologians have long since pondered on the generosity of God in risking the good news mission following his son's ascension to this so frail band of disciples. Nor can we say that Jesus' complete faith and confidence in his disciples is crystal clear based on the flawed, error-strewn band we saw in the Gospels up to this point and with the events about to unfold on the next day leading to his crucifixion. Jesus prays for his eagerly listening friends to have my joy in their hearts in all its fullness. They will not be long in the world, 
just as Jesus did not belong in this world and prays for their protection from all evil. Jesus has faith that they will continue to spread the good news to the wider world and prays that they may be one so that the world will believe that God the Father sent them after he has ascended. Jesus also prays for those for whom the disciples will convert, that they may have this life of unity with God, such as Jesus as himself shares with the Father. The obedience and love from Peter and his disciple friends will be crystal clear after Jesus has ascended, as recorded in Acts. It struck me in reading the first chapter of Acts that just after Jesus ascended, the disciples returned to the same upper room where days earlier they had cowered in fear after the crucifixion of their Lord Jesus. But this time, there is no apprehension. Instead, all with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Peter confidently goes on to stand and address 120 followers. He speaks with authority and conviction as the decision to appoint an apostle to replace the lost Judas is made. And this is all happening just before the Pentecost experience of the Holy Spirit. They are now, you could say, responding to events with mature faith and courage, not fear and confusion. When Janet and I were preparing the evening prayer office for Friday, uh, we had already decided earlier that week that Janet would create a painting of the Ascension, which you can see here. And I would write a, a sonnet about the Ascension experience. And I wrote it um, as if I was one of the minor disciples. So I'd just like to um, read that sonnet to you. And please do um, look at that wonderful picture as well. We ascended the mountain at dawn. No one talked, each of us wrapped in thought. Although our Lord taught us, we must not mourn. I could not fall at his feet. I was fraught, desolate at his death on the dark cross and riddled with guilt that we had scattered. The Lord in rising healed us from all such loss. I feared he was leaving that my heart would shatter. Yes, there was sadness when our Lord ascended, yet as we descended, our footsteps never faltered. We returned to the upper room in calm repose. Peter's face shone, his words shed light and salt. Now we know that our Lord never did depart. Wherever we go, he remains within each heart. And what Janet and I independently um, thought was the key note of our painting and our poem was the fact that after the ascension, Christ was dwelling in each disciple's heart. But let me go back to those eavesdropping disciples at the Last Supper when Jesus prays to his father. I imagine that it is John's intention towards the end of his gospel that we future believers are also invited to eavesdrop. We are invited to hear this prayer, which communicates the theological vision that lies at the heart of the life of faith, that Jesus hands those he loves back to God and God holds his promises for this community. I mentioned at the start of this homily that we human beings are relational and social by nature. Terrible though many events have been ensuing from this pan pandemic, we have also been deeply moved and heartened by numerous acts of kindness, love, and self-sacrifice shown by so many good people. Hearts have been touched even while social distance rules have been enacted. Our Christian faith is based on love, kindness, and self-giving. When we act in these ways, we are reflecting Jesus Christ's glory and reflecting God's image. Today, in this wounded, troubled world, we can, inspired and emboldened by our Christian faith, bring good news to anxious hearts and act as God's stewards in caring for God's creation. 
and tending to those who suffer in this pandemic. Social distancing restrictions can never thankfully be an impediment in prayer for others. In faith, when we pray, we trust that the spirit travels from us to the recipient of our prayer. But just as the disciples following Christ's ascension were left with God's work to be done, that is just as true for us in May 2020. Let us, like them, not be cowered by present events, which can at times seem overwhelming. Let us rather, in our faith, as one united body of Christ, have the courage as today's disciples to do God's work with love, kindness and generosity of spirit. The final point I wish to make is that the disciples are not orphaned by Jesus ascending to heaven, as Janet and I found in our painting and poem. And neither are we ever orphans ourselves in our faith and love for others. Even the devastating effects of this pandemic cannot make us orphans because we are all one in Christ. Social distancing can never diminish this truth. In our Christian faith, we may take comfort and heart. In our service recently, we sang a hymn, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. In verse two, we sang these words. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us. Faith believes, not questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him, when the 40 days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with you evermore. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God, in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our intercessions this morning are being led by a member of our church family, Robert, and he will be accompanied by Pauline, Judy, Marilyn, Meredy, and Derek, all members of our church family. Almighty and ever-living God, we come to you now as your children and your family, carrying with us our fears and confusion and wonder and praise and thanks that in this continually changing world we may rely on you, our constant, loving and unchanging God who sees all and listens when we call upon him. Lord, we recognise with joy and gratitude your presence in the love and kindness that surrounds us at this time. Finding alternative ways to communicate with family and friends and make new friends in our area and beyond with the opportunity to observe the natural world in a quieter environment. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, when I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, Listen to me. 
We pray, Lord, for all working in the NHS or care sector, and in particular those struggling to combat the coronavirus. For those who work in hospitals, care homes, hospices, sheltered housing agencies and district nursing and midwifery staff. Also GP surgeries and pharmacy staff. We pray for enhanced skill and knowledge for those working to develop a vaccine and for government ministers and departments deploying strategies designed to monitor and alleviate the spread of infection. Grant them truth, courage and wisdom to make clear and practical decisions to improve day-to-day -day lives and relieve worry. We pray, Heavenly Father, both here in White Regis and around the world, for your church. We ask your blessing on poorer countries with so very few medical staff for so vast a population, with precious few resources without added complications. We pray for strength and safety of churches and Christians in these areas and volunteers in charitable organisations. Pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are ill in our community or elsewhere who are known to us. Especially we pray for those with coronavirus in their isolation. We pray for families, friends and loved ones who are anxious for the recovery of those who are ill. Hold their hands, Lord, and walk with them the steady steps of faith. We especially remember today Brian Wood, Maureen and Philip de Havilland, Martin, Andrew, Dorothy Burt, Charlotte Musgrove, Janice, David, Anna, Sophie and family, Beryl Hamlet, Grace, Hannah and Chris, Pam Hart, Mandy, Faye, the Reverend Joe Haynes and family. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Lord, we daily share the grief of so many losing their lives on earth and pray for their peace and home in heaven with you. Comfort those who mourn and may they be cheered with the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. We remember today in our prayers, Brother Vincent, of Hillfield Friary, Pamela Stone, 
Joan Ellis, Jean, Alan Jones, Sue Darla, and Mary Gardner. Lord Jesus, as we remember your ascension to heaven this last week, we recall your final words to your disciples. I am with you always. Help us to continue to give thanks to you in all our situations because your promise of 2,000 years ago to 11 startled men still holds firm for us and a startled world today. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Lord Jesus 
said be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, and by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks that after his most glorious resurrection, he appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who wants and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Edmund and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. I heard the voice of a great multitude crying, Alleluia. The Lord our God has entered into his kingdom. Blessed are those who are called the supper of the Lamb. Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves and keep us in your care. Amen. O oh God, help us to trust you. Help us to know that you are with us. Help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Break me, break me, 
And our prayer after communion. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim. And we ask this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to listen to Look at the World by John Rutter, but it is sung by the Rayleigh Boys Choir from North Carolina in the United States of America. With the permission of Jeremy Tucker, the artistic director and conductor, and Mark Mannering, who is in charge of the video and sound. We thank you all, the choir, Jeremy and Mark, and we pray that you have take, been able to take part in this service and have enjoyed our worship as much as I believe we have as well.
And what a wonderful way to remember that we are all part of God's creation. We are all members of his most wondrous, precious and unique family. Our blessing on everyone. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church throughout the world, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Today uh, is meant to be, uh, were it not a Sunday, we would be celebrating the life of St. Alvin who was instrumental in bringing the good news of Christ, led by the Spirit into this part of Dorset. And so we say as we are dismissed, waiting expectantly for the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Uh, I only have uh, one notice because uh, the notices were done so expertly at uh, 6 p.m. yesterday. So stay, go back in the Facebook group and you will be able to pick up all the news. Um, and alternatively, we will have sent you uh, by email uh, the cue sheet for today so you know all that's going on in the parish at this particular time. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple of bits of feedback just to say that at the food bank we are extremely busy. Um, we gave over 90 parcels away this week and we are incredibly grateful for those of you who have donated food, money, who are volunteering, who are trying to uh, help in the project uh, of caring for people. But the reality of being furloughed or losing jobs is affecting, uh, unfortunately, many people this time. So do please keep the food bank in your prayers. Secondly, we are well into the period of thy kingdom come. Uh, these nine days of prayer that have been uh, 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 while we wait between ascension and Pentecost for the coming of the Spirit, that we might uh, see our friends and loved ones uh, helped, restored, and coming to a personal faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to encourage you during these times of Thy Kingdom Come to log into the Thy Kingdom Come website or to download the app or to join in the prayers locally that are happening. Uh, through um, local churches that are praying. And I want to encourage you each day to think of five friends, people that you know and love, that you would so love them to know the love and comfort, the healing and the restoration that Jesus has brought to you. And so we will keep you and them in their prayers as we pray earnestly for the coming of God's Spirit. Well, that's the end of the notices, and we finish our service today with this beautiful hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King. Rejoice the Lord is King, your Lord and Oh.
keys of death and hell, a joy Jesus is. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say. Rejoice in glorious praise.